So, said you didn't get it, right? Um, if we guys look at our unit circle, all right, let me go and show you guys a couple things. A couple things we, I wanted to show you guys with the unit circle. There's three points I told you guys we need to make sure that we have memorized in our quadrant. First one was 30 degrees, right? This is on your unit circle. The x and y coordinate for our unit circle, I mean for our 30 degrees, was square root of 3 over 2, comma 1 half, right? Where this is your x and that's your y. On a 45 degree, 45 degree angle, it was radical 2 over 2, comma radical 2 over 2. And then for 60 degrees, we had 1 half radical 3 over 2. So can everybody look at their unit circle and know that that's what we have for those three points? Right? Does everybody agree with that? Yes. Okay. Now, here's where the co-function identities come through. Remember, when we're talking about a point T, right, T represents a point on the line. So, um, remember, when we're talking about our point T, we're talking about if I say cosine of my point T, that represents cosine deals with the x or the y coordinate of T. X, right? And sine deals with the, the y coordinate, correct? So, if let's say they look at sine of 30 degrees. Sine of 30 degrees is 1 half, right? Does everybody see that? Sine of 30 degrees equals 1 half. Now, by using our cofunction identity, if I say sine of 30 degrees, that's the same thing of cosine of 90 minus 30. What's 90 minus 30? 60. So I'm saying cosine of 60 degrees is equal to sine of 30 degrees, right? Let's see if that's true. I go to 60 degrees, this one. What is cosine? Cosine is the x. What does the x represent? One half. Did you guys see how this is true? Yes. Right? Um, and that's why I used the cosecant and secant for that last problem. And it, guys, it works for any other one. So we know that cosine of 60 degrees is going to equal 1 half. Now, so what they're saying is, if I gave you secant of 120 and cosecant of 30 degrees, so if I say secant is 120 degrees, let's take a look at it. So I say secant. So secant of 120 is the same thing as cosecant of 90 minus 120, which is cosecant of negative 30 degrees. Well, what was the secant of 120? Negative 2. So you guys see how cosecant of negative 30 is also going to be negative 2? You ever see that? This, this is not on this you know, circle. But we can look at tangent of 60. Tangent of 60 degrees. I go over here, right? The tangent is radical 3 over 2 divided by 1 half, which when they cancel out equals square root of 3. Or sorry, yes, square root of 3. Then I look at the cotangent of 60 degree, or 30 degrees, which is going to be the exact same thing. Cotangent is x over y. See how the y over x, x over y, it's still going to be radical 3 divided by 2 over 1 half. So therefore, this one is going to equal radical 3 as well. Anybody have any questions on that, on why these work? Does everybody see how they work? Yeah. So you guys need to have these written down and used on your two blue circles so you can have them. Because they're very important for you guys to understand. The sine of 30, sine of 30 degrees, is the same thing as cosine of 60. And that works for the rest of it. Any other questions?